It started, I think, at the age of eight, when I listened to my mother carefully when she tells me the story, when I was a young boy and I still had hair. Eight years is when I came in contact with the philosophy of Albert Schweitzer. And I know Albert Schweitzer might have been forgotten by many people, but he was a very famous man who served humanity and um, went out to Africa and just did that, just serving humanity because he felt that he had to give something back of what he had received so much in his life to others. So when I read about him, I went home and I wrote him a letter as an eight-year-old boy and my father helped because it was a German doctor so I had to be in German letter. And a long time after that I got a response from Dr. Schweitzer. And I was fortunate enough at the age of 11 in 1959 when he made his final visit to Europe to meet with him. And that is when I think the turning point started that I really wanted to put his philosophy, that I wanted to make his philosophy my philosophy, that I wanted to put reverence for life, his philosophy, into action. And that is what it actually is. So what I am today and what I'm doing today is because of the man who really empowered me to serve humanity. Don't forget, it is five minutes to midnight. We only have a short period of time before we go home to do what we have to do on this earth. You're absolutely right. I changed my focus from East European countries directly into Africa. And I think it was also the call from my dear old friend Desmond Tutu, the old Archbishop Nobel Prize winner, who at one point suggested that I do something with regards to children with HIV and AIDS. So he called upon me, and it was about 10 years ago now. I have known him for, my God, I think 20, 25 years now, and, and him to, to say, it, it is time that you do something in Africa. You're, the people in Africa need you now. And I'm very happy I did. I'm very happy I, I, I did. The answer that I have for you, first thing that comes to my mind is the is also the goals and the mission of the Medical Knowledge Institute, which stands for prevention through education. We can prevent so many, so many diseases, so many diseases through education. It is not that people die of AIDS every single day on the African continent, and for that matter in Europe and in, in other countries of the world. But people die of treatable diseases that we have completely forgotten because we have put so much focus and so much emphasis on AIDS, including myself. I'm guilty for that as well. 25 years ago when AIDS was first discovered, we have put so much emphasis that when we, after 25, look over our shoulders, we realize, oh my God, we have forgotten all the curable diseases. And children are not dying of AIDS in the townships, they are dying of diarrhea, which is a curable disease, which is a disease that no child should die of. I count on students, and even students in Africa, who sometimes do not have the chance and the opportunities and the possibilities that we might have in Europe and America to go to schools and to study medicine or to study public health. I even challenge South African, at this moment, Southern Africa students to really go into public health. There is so much to be done. I can hardly wait while here at Legacy International to meet with students, to meet with the students that we are planning on meeting on Monday at Virginia Tech, to, to, to empower them and tell them how important it is to continue with their study in public health and to use to use their knowledge very soon to put that knowledge into practice. There is so much to be done. It is unheard of. I mean, so much can be done with a public health degree and even a master's in, in public health. It's an awful lot to be done. But students should go out and make their hand dirty. 
sometimes you wonder, why am I doing it? Uh, I remember Bosnia, I remember Yugoslavia in general, that I often wondered, my God, why are you bringing me here? What is the reason for you putting me here to help? And then I remember one letter, which I will be sharing with you also on Monday, a letter which I get, which I would receive from time to time from nobody else than that little old lady in India, Mother Teresa. And if you would read it, I still get goosebumps when I think about it. And she would read, and I would read what she, what she wrote, that she would be thinking of me and praying for me, and that I should continue to do, do, uh, to do God's work. And that were the, the little things that I needed to really say, okay, come up, get out of bed, or get yourself together. Together we can do it. Together we can make a difference. 